Good evening and welcome to the Year Ahead meeting for Year 11 in the academic year 2022-2023. We hope that the presentation this evening will really equip parents to support their children in a very important year, Year 11, with so many external examinations. We also hope that this presentation will support pupils so that they learn how they can work hard and fulfil their potential in their GCSE exams. My name is Dr Karen Williams and I'm Deputy Head at Bishop Gore School and I'm going to introduce you now to Mrs Rachel Walters who is Associate Assistant Head at the school and she will give you a quick summary of our excellent pupil results in 2022. So starting with our A-level results from this year, we have a whole host of success stories that we are incredibly proud of. The percentage of pupils securing grades from A star to C was outstanding again this year. 97% of students attained at least two A star to E grades. 80% of students achieved at least three A star to C grades. And in addition to this, over 31% of our students achieved at least three A star to A grades, which is an outstanding achievement. I'd also like to highlight those pupils who left school with phenomenal qualifications. So as you can see, we had a large group of pupils who achieved five A star to A grades. We also had a significant number of pupils achieving four A star to A grades and three A star to A grades. These are outstanding achievements and we're incredibly proud of these pupils and we're thrilled that they will have all of the opportunities open to them so they can follow their chosen career path or their chosen route into further education. Following those results, I'm sure you can appreciate that our sixth form is something we are incredibly proud of at Bishop Gore, and we would of course love to have you join our sixth form. If you would like more information about our sixth form, if you'd like to find out what you can study at Bishop Gore, then the opportunity is available to you to attend one of our sixth form open evenings. That will give you an opportunity to take a tour of the school, meet the subject teachers and raise any queries that you may have. Please see our website for more information regarding this event. In addition to our A-level results, it was an outstanding year for us at Bishop Gore with our GCSE results. Of particular note, over 66% of Year 11 pupils achieved at least five A star to C grades, including English and Mathematics. This is outstanding. In addition to this, over 78% of Year 11 pupils achieved at least five A star to A GCSE grades. I'd like to highlight some departments also who enjoyed particular success this year. Over 74% of pupils achieved A star to C grades in English. Over 73% of pupils achieved A star to C grades in maths. Over 82% of pupils achieved A star to C grades in double science. Over 71% of pupils achieved A star to A grades in physics and over 67% in biology. And over 78% of pupils achieved A star to C grades in full course Welsh. We're really pleased to celebrate that over 96% of Year 11 pupils achieved the equivalent of at least five GCSE qualifications at A star to G grade this year. These were all outstanding achievements and we're incredibly proud of all of our pupils. So a really good guide is that we look at those who've gone before us and learn from the good things that they did or from the mistakes that they made. So let's have a look at learning from a pupil who did very well in their GCSE examinations. So this is a guide for success from a pupil who far outperformed expectations. We'll call this pupil Pupil X. Pupil X was predicted B grades at GCSE. However, this pupil was determined to achieve better grades. Pupil X, in fact, achieved 10 A star grades and two A grades. Pupil A X stated that the achievements were due to hard work, lots of revision, and not just talent, or as we put it, intelligence. So these are the, some of the things that Pupil X did. Pupil X summarised lessons at the end of every day in school using mind maps and flashcards. 
So basically, this pupil was adhering to our homework principle that you go home and revise everything you've done in school that day. This pupil began intense revision in February half term. This pupil started studying for two to three hours every weeknight and six hours on the weekend, increasing this time as the exams drew closer. This pupil used self-quizzing, so tests and, and little examinations at the end of each revision session using uh, web-based packages such as BBC Bite Size, Corbett Maths, Quizlet and so on. This pupil then moved on to past paper questions as this pupil neared their examinations to self-quiz. So there are many other things that Bishop Gore provides to help pupils to achieve their full potential in their examinations. Here is an example of one of them. Every single subject provides a revision sheet for each of their pupils. And on that revision sheet, it gives pupils key information that will help them to achieve their potential. So as you can see here, this is one from last year. We have advice for the examination. So just some clear advice into what equipment they need and the timings of the exams. We put on there the key dates when this examination is. So this revision sheet was made by the mathematics department. They also on the right then put uh, ways that pupils can encourage a uh, good, uh, good retrieval, good memory. So that's through mind maps, flashcards, self quizzing and past papers. And then they give them other revision strategies as well. Then in more detail on the back of this sheet, they give them uh, a weekly, revision strategy to help them to know what to do. So this again was from last year, but the teachers put together uh, a revision uh, timetable as it were with different topics for them to know what they should be revising. So they can see here that they're going through things, three or four topics a week, they tick them off and then you can see that they are aiming towards their examination. And the maths department were really wise here. They put the non-calculated topics first um, then they sit, sat their exam on the 20th of May and then in between uh, the non-calculated paper on the 20th of May and the 3rd of June, the calculated paper, then they put in the topics that would only really come up on the calculator paper. So using these revision sheets, the teachers are using their expertise and their knowledge of the examination structure to really support the pupils at Bishop Gore. So how do we ensure that pupils fulfil their potential at Bishop Gore School? Well, during the academic year, we will provide you and your child with a booklet that is a booklet to help you in year 11. It looks like this booklet here and it says it has helpful information for pupils, parents and carers for year 11. Inside that booklet, you will have your examination timetable. So we would start with saying that you should familiarise yourself with the exam timetable. The booklet also contains key dates for year 11. These key dates are written chronologically in month order. And what we would say is they're a useful tool to help you support your child and for children to know what they should be doing every month. So for example, here's an example in September, it says there are English language orals and speeches on. And there's also the GCSE history NEA or non-examination assessment deadline. So every month there will be deadlines that need to be adhered to and uh, can give you that guideline to get success in year 11. We would also say that pupils need to practice how to revise, to practice their exam technique and so we provide pupils with a mock examination timetable around November and December of 2022. This examination timetable will also be in the booklet to help you to prepare. In the booklet, there is also subject information. So key information that will help you to succeed in every subject will be provided for you. So information about uh, dates, also information about how the exam works, information about what revision might be on, information about websites or books that you can buy, um, or revision materials that the school's providing to help you get the best out of that subject. When thinking about 
how to support pupils and ensure that they achieve their potential in year 11, the best advice that we can give is to start early. So as part of our homework policy, we expect pupils to undertake regular independent revision in order to consolidate what has been learnt in lessons. So we would encourage pupils to undertake daily independent revision to review what has been studied that day at school. There's a range of techniques that can be used to support this independent revision. For example, creating mind maps on everything that was learnt in a lesson. Self-quizzing. So using practice questions on everything learnt in a lesson and then testing um, themselves on them a few days later. Flashcards can be another very useful strategy. So creating flashcards on everything that pupils have learnt in the lesson and these can either summarise information or they can have questions and answers on them. Again, pupils can use these to support self-quizzing. Finally, knowledge organisers are a really effective way to review the information that's been learnt in a lesson. So summarising the key information from the lesson. And again, this can be used to support self-quizzing. So at this early point in the year, it can be really useful for us to understand what it is that pupils are aiming for. So if pupils wish to progress onto a level three course, here at sixth form or at college, then they will generally need to achieve five A star to C grades, including English and maths. However, if pupils wish to progress onto a level two course at college, then they'll generally need to achieve five A star to G grades. So now that we know what we're aiming for, it's really important for us to think about what pupils need to do in order to achieve their potential. Firstly, and most importantly, we need pupils to attend school regularly. So we need pupils to ensure that they attend school every day, that they are punctual, and they make the most out of all of those opportunities that are available to them. Your child's form tutor will regularly share their attendance figure with them. And as parents and carers, it can be really useful to monitor that and remember the impact that any days missed can have on learning. So, for example, we can see for pupils who have 97% attendance, that would mean that they've missed five days over the course of the year, which would equate to 25 hours of learning missed. Another example, if a pupil has 90% attendance, which may not seem that bad initially, that actually equates to 20 days missed over a school year which would equate to 100 hours of learning missing. So we're really keen to ensure pupils are attending every day and are making the most out of those opportunities available to them. As part of that excellent attendance, we would like pupils to arrive promptly in the morning at 8.30 when the gates open so that they're ready to attend registration with their form tutor and co-tutor who will support them throughout year 11. The structure of the school day is displayed here for you and has been designed to ensure that pupils can remain focused and get the best out of their school day. As a school, we promote positive behaviour and high expectations. So we would like pupils to ensure that they arrive in the correct uniform, that they arrive promptly in the morning, ready for tutor time at 8.40, they bring the correct equipment to school so that they're able to participate fully in lessons. That they attend school with a positive attitude where they are ready, respectful and safe. We expect that there is full attendance to lessons so that pupils can make the most out of every learning opportunity. We would like to ensure that all work is completed in class and at home. That there is no truancy and that pupils are respectful both to members of staff and to their peers at all times. At regular points throughout the year, we as a school will review pupil progress. All teachers will issue a progress grade for the pupils that they teach. That progress grade is a summary of a pupil's attainment thus far in the academic year and an indication of what he or she is likely to achieve at the end of the key stage if they continue to work in the same way. We will send home a progress grade one, two and three and we'll also hold a parents evening where you have an opportunity to talk with your child's teachers.
Following these regular progress reviews, our outstanding team of form tutors will support pupils to track their progress. So your child will work with their tutor to set targets. The form tutor will track pupil progress and monitor performance by monitoring work and liaising with teachers. The tutor will then mentor your child and help organise them. If appropriate, the tutor will arrange for other mentors to be included with subject specific skills. The tutor will also keep your child informed of all revision sessions available for them. They'll also be in regular contact with you via email, notes in planners, phone calls and of course there'll be an opportunity to meet with them on parents evening. So I suppose you as parents just want to know what are the best techniques that children should be using to revise and uh, we at Bishop Gore really pride ourselves that we've spent a long time looking at what the research says are the best techniques for children to be revising, to be using to revise and we will support all of our pupils in this way in school but we want to support you at home uh, as well. So let's have a look at this picture. This is not what to do when we're revising. The desk is messy, the child is eating at the desk, the child is sleeping. These things are not going to work. We can see the radio is on, we can see books everywhere. We need a clean, uh, really clear, organised desk. We need uh, specified eating times where we have breaks from the desk. We need the TV off, the radio off, and we need there to be a sense of organisation with our revision. I know that many pupils think that if they get a highlighter out and highlight their notes, that will help them to revise. But it, is, it has been shown that highlighting is one of the most ineffective revision techniques. And all you simply are doing is painting your book. Then another myth in terms of revision is just reread your notes. Well, actually, this again is ineffective. What you find is you read your notes and then you can't remember what you've read. It has very little impact in terms of helping pupils to learn and remember. So what are the effective revision techniques? So when you've uh, revised a topic, it is really good to summarise what you've learned by creating some flashcards, put some questions on one side and answers on the other and just keep testing yourself. Working through past paper examinations, so testing yourself is the key to remembering. So past paper examinations are really, really helpful. Quizzing yourself or quizzing other pupils, getting into pairs and having a revision buddy is really, really important too. Doing things like create to fill the gap exercises for you and a friend to complete, those are really good too. And then creating multiple choice quizzes or using those that are on the internet to help you are really, really good. All of these techniques can be found uh, on the internet, on things like BBC Bite Size, Quizlet, MyMaths. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We can use the resources that are already there to help us in terms of our revision. And then going on to our homework policy. Our homework policy is there to teach children how to revise for their examinations from year seven onwards. So what we say to our children is once they've had their uh, lessons that day, they go home and they revise what they've learned by mind mapping, self-quizzing, using flashcards cards, or knowledge organisers. And then when they go back to the next lesson uh, in that subject, then the teacher will test them using a low stakes quiz. So why do we do that? Well, it identifies gaps in knowledge, it helps pupils prepare for the next lesson. It helps pupils to organise themselves. It improves the transfer of knowledge to other subjects. It improves brain power. It gives feedback from the teachers. It helps retain knowledge. It helps pupils to access new material. And it helps pupils to get into that routine of revising regularly. So even if pupils haven't been doing this uh, effectively up until now, year 11 isn't too late. And so from the beginning of year 11, all of our pupils should be going home and utilising the mind map, self-quizzing, flashcards and knowledge organiser strategy. If we start doing that now and get into that routine and build that up as we edge closer and closer to the GCSE examinations, then our pupils will be fully prepared for whatever faces them in that examination hall. As well as our brilliant homework policy, there are really effective 
effective websites out there that will help you to revise well for your GCSEs. Get Revising is one such website. It's really helpful for setting up a revision timetable, for helping you to learn how to mind map your topics and helping you to set checklists so that you remember and learn all of the information that you need for that examination. Quizlet is one of my favourite websites. Quizlet is a brilliant website that helps you to create uh, revision flashcards, uh, knowledge organisers and mind maps and it also helps you to test yourself. Other students have uploaded uh, revision uh, tests and uh, flashcards themselves so that you can take advantage of those but Quizlet is a really brilliant website to help you to get the best out of testing yourself. My Maths is a package we use throughout every year at Bishop Gore and all pupils are familiar with this. There are brilliant tests on that. There's brilliant practice questions. So please take advantage of My Maths to help you with your maths revision. Another very popular website is BBC Bite Size and most people are familiar with this. It has revision um, information for every single subject that pupils study at GCC, but it also has uh, quizzes and it has mind maps and all sorts of revision material that's so helpful. So what I would say to every pupil is that they do their revision, they summarise their notes, and then they have a look at BBC Bite Size and then test themselves using BBC Bite Size. It is a brilliant, brilliant resource. So what about the exam season? So as we approach uh, May and June, we will be thinking about the exam and the exam hall. So when pupils go into the examination, they need to know their candidate number and the centre number 68855. We uh, provide every pupil with this information as they go into the exam. They will be on a yellow piece of card on their examination desk. They will need a clear pencil case with equipment. So the clear pencil case is so we can ensure that nothing is in there that shouldn't be in there. And we need that equipment so that we aren't delaying the start of the exam with pupils asking for pieces of equipment. Pupils can bring water to the examination, but the label must be removed so that we can see that the bottle contains just water. All mobile, mobile phones are not permitted in, in the examination hall. And the same goes for any other digital device, such as a, a digital watch or anything like that. So what things can go wrong? So if there's a clash, sometimes pupils will have two exams at the same time. Then we uh, allow the pupils to sit the first exam and then we supervise them and they sit the second exam straight afterwards. We ensure that they've had a snack, they've had a toilet break in between, they've gathered their thoughts, but then they go and sit their exam. So there's no issue if that happens. If pupils are ill, they will be sent a self-certification form that needs to be completed and returned as soon as possible. All we would say is, if there are issues like this, illness or whatever, please ensure that you get in touch with your head of house, progress leader, or our examination secretary to make sure that um, all pupils um, have the best start. So what happens if pupils are late? Well, we get in touch with every pupil, parent, carer immediately if we think they're, they're late and we try our very best to make sure that they get into that exam. And we must emphasize that we feel that as a school, we provide the best revision um, right up until the examination. So pupils will attend school throughout the examination period. So here are our key contacts. Our examination officer is Janice John. Her uh, email address is the usual for Bishop Gore. Her name, Janice John, and at bishopgore.net. Then Bracelet House has Carl Greenwood as its progress leader. Caswell House's progress leader is Jess Bowers. Langland House is Mrs. Ta Miss Tanya Jones. Limestead House is Mrs. Helen James. Rotherslade is Mr. Ian Capon. And I've put the telephone number 411400 at the bottom, just in case there are any other issues. I really hope tonight that this information has been of great use to you in supporting your pupils, your, your children, in getting the best out of their GCSE results. Please communicate with us. Please see that uh, we have a wealth of information about how to get the best out of these examinations. We really want to support our pupils at Bishop Gore and you as parents. And I hope that tonight this, uh, this 
quick presentation has gone part way in helping you to do that. But please keep in contact with us. Any feedback would be gratefully uh, received. And we hope that your children do their very, very best in, the, in their GCSE examinations at the end of this academic year. Good evening. Have a great evening. Bye bye.